Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Streich, the Executive Director, in conversation with Joan Stein Shimke. She is the director of the film Saeed, which you can see as part of the 2021 festival. The in-person screenings begin September 21st through September 26th, followed by a week of virtual access starting September 27th and running through October 3rd. You can find out all the information, including schedules, descriptions, and upcoming events by going to the Global Peace Film Festival website, peacefilmfest.org. And now let's welcome Joan. Hello, Joan. Hi. Hi, Joan. It's Hi. great to have you with us. And so let's start by talking a little bit about your film. Can you tell us about it? Yes, it's a short film, but it's a film about a refugee family that had settled in Long Island. And, you know, just because somebody comes out of a war doesn't mean their troubles are over once they've been resettled. So my um, co-producer and the writer of the of the screenplay, um, he and I really wanted to do something. We'd made this a couple of years ago and we really wanted to do something after we heard about what was happening in Syria and what was happening to the refugees afterwards. So um, that's a little bit about the film. Yeah. So this is a narrative, Joan. Um, how did you decide on this material? What attracted you to it and what's important about the story that you wanna convey? Well, I think, I really wanted to convey, you know, what happens when a family gets back together after being through such trauma and how there aren't always easy answers or happy endings and how do you deal with that trauma, right? Because, and we're seeing it again, you know, I, I think the reason I wanted to do a fictionalized version is because I, first of all, we couldn't go into Syria. We couldn't meet families over there. So we had to create a story. Um, but I'm very interested in situation of refugees because my parents were refugees. My, my, a lot of my family, a lot, you know, my grandmother, my aunts, my uncles, they were all refugees after World War II. So, you know, my first, one of my first short films was about that, about um, what had happened to, to people during the Second World War. Um, so that seems to be a continual theme throughout my films. I also, um, I, I just, I'm attracted to stories about people that have to go through these difficult times, but yet find the connection and being human throughout it all. Uh, and you, and for anyone who uh, is listening, please do watch Saeed because the, the human element and the complexity you know, you really captured it very beautifully. It, uh, the characters are very rich and, and have a lot of depth to them. And, Thank you. Um, um, you know, so in the process of, of creating this story, um, you, know, did, you know, did you learn anything in terms of, uh, of, of the material that surprised you as you were making the film? Yeah, that's actually a really good question because I think, you know, the lead actor, Leif Nakli, who is also Rami, um, he's Syrian. And what I really found was that he's so connected to the material and to the, um, to the struggle with such compassion. So I just, I, I, you know, I'm, I always continue to be amazed by films and, and the power that they hold and the fact that people can connect in such a deep way. Um, it was very emotional for him. And I think, as you'll see in the film and the breakdown that he has, it, he had that connection. So as did the, the lead actress and, and even the young actress who'd never acted before, but her mother, her parents are both from Egypt originally, even though they're Egyptian American now, um, you know, they all had this connection and, and sadness that had to do with the story. So I, I just, I'm continually, continually surprised 
to see those types of deep connections that are made through fictional stories that help us connect more to the real people who've perhaps gone through something like this. Well, in the connection, that's, uh, that's key. That's why we tell stories, right? We, um, we want to use these stories not only to, um, uh, to communicate what, you know, what we've observed in the world, but also to, to grow closer to other people. And, and, and can you talk a little bit about, you know, um, in the film, um, you know, some of your approach to, to, this, to telling this particular story? Yeah, I think in terms of the approach, I really wanted to get in close, to get in tight, that, to be intimate so that you can feel closer to the characters. Um, you know, I didn't have to rely on music. I didn't even have to rely on dialogue sometimes. It really was about um, just the looks, just the, the, you know, what you see on people's faces. So I think that was my approach to it. Like, how do you bring an audience in? You know, we hear about refugees all the time and the numbers and the statistics, but how do we really see what somebody is going through emotionally, mentally, you know, 20 over, oh my gosh, 25 years ago now, I had volunteered in refugee camps in Hungary because I was living over there during the war in the former Yugoslavia. So I got to volunteer with refugees from the, um, the war in former Yugoslavia. And, and that's another thing that, I, like I said, it just keeps seeming to come into my storytelling, into the themes that I want to tell and spending a lot of time. And it was mainly women and children um, and just my heart went out for them. And so many people around the world didn't know what was really happening. Again, it was like this foreign war, like they didn't understand, but you know, people want the same things. They want safety, they want home, they want love, they want food. And um, I became very close with a, with a few families at the refugee camp. And, you know, it's actually what inspired me to go to film school and become a filmmaker. How do you tell people's stories? How do you convey these things to the world um, and sometimes even entertain because you know it's not all drama all the time people still want to hear music they still want to laugh they still want joy um, so anyway so that's why I continue to make these types of films well and that that leads me to um, one of the reasons why I, I programmed your film uh, even though it's a narrative and people expect us to only ever program documentaries um, we, you know, we, we remind people that, that it's about that emotional connection. And, and so the, the mission of our festival, um, we hope that when audiences, uh, when the lights come up from having seen any of the work that we program, that, that people kind of sit up and, and, you know, and, and ask, what can I do? Or, or they, they look to take in the experience that they've seen on the screen back with them into their own lives and into their own communities. And I, and I think, and I just wanna draw that out a little bit more um, that, you know, how important it is just having that empathetic connection with another person's story. So if you could talk a little bit more about that, that, that aspect of, of what makes you the filmmaker that you are. Yeah, you know, and I was gonna say, if there's anything that you can do, you know, if this sparks, anything it's like okay what can I do yes we can give money and that's a great thing but how can I become involved on a personal level like one of the things that we had done because we've done a kickstarter campaign is we um, donated some of that money to an organization in Lebanon and they were dealing with kids there you know helping children who had fled from the war in Syria so like that was one of the things that you know we did to directly um, helping that organization or you know, finding out about a refugee organization here that in Long Island, there are so many. I mean, we're gonna see an influx now of Afghani refugees. They're gonna need help. Um, you know, the Syrian refugees, maybe now they're more settled, even though still a huge problem, especially with PTSD, trauma. But you know, what can you do now? What's happening now that you can help with? Because um, yeah, and, and it's interesting in terms of documentary versus fiction like I have great respect for documentaries too I mean the truth is always stranger than fiction uh, I believe um, but sometimes you just can't make a documentary that's you know right there I mean and 
some people have done great ones, but you can't get there, you know, or you can't meet the people that are there. Whereas with fiction, you actually can create a story that is based on real life stories and, and go from there. So, you know, if this film can inspire you in any way to, to do something, I would, I would be so happy. Um, like I said, I worked in, I volunteered in refugee camp, my now husband and I for almost two and a half years. I mean, you know, the war didn't just go away. It went on and on for years. And uh, I'm still in touch with um, some of the families that I became close to who are now like in Canada and back in Bosnia or whatever it is. So I, 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 I can only hope that we, even our, the little steps that each one of us takes will have a larger effect in the long run. So that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful way to put it, Joan. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that really is. And, and that is, that is um, helpful to our audiences to let them know when they, you know, when something moves them, the kinds of things that people can do and how important it is for people to take those, those actions that may seem very little, but to somebody else can be very, very meaningful. And then in return, be that much more meaningful to the person who's who's taking that step. So, um, so because if I if you don't mind, Nina, I just want to add it is life changing in the sense. Well, for me, it was life changing working with re refugees and making the films that I've made. But also, sometimes all it takes is like one person caring about you or helping you that changes changes them and their perspective. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's so easy to lose hope, but yet if you feel like just one person cares about you suddenly you know you can move forward so yeah, yeah that's so important thank you thank you for adding that um so what's next for you so i'm working on um rewriting a feature script that i've been working on and hoping to film it next year so it needs another rewrite um i just finished another short film um it's this one's very short but uh, I'm going to be getting that out to festivals soon. And it's about um, a mother-daughter uh, relationship and the mother is an elderly woman. So I'm not going to say anything else because it's really, really short. <laughs> but, um, you know, I love directing and I needed to get out there and direct again. So I did that just to warm myself up and, and you know, create something that I, I just felt passionate about. Um, and yeah, and I, I need to finish writing this screenplay so that I can get it out there and start making it. So that's what I'm working on. And I really appreciate like your festival because I just love what your your goals are here and what you're aiming to do with it. So I really appreciate being part of it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. And, and but we couldn't, uh, we couldn't put on the festival that we put on without the, the generous and creative work of filmmakers like yourself. So the thanks are, are, are from us to you, so. Um, and we thank everyone who has watched this interview. We really hope that you will uh, check in with peacefilmfest.org and follow us on social media because one of the things we love to do even after the festival is over is to give you updates like what Joan's next film will be once, it's, uh, once you're in a place where you can talk about it we, uh, or sh share a trailer. We will be sure to let our audiences know about it. So again, please go to peacefilmfest.org, check out all the information about the upcoming festival, and we will see you at the next GLOW. Thank you.